Hello, it's Steve. You are listening to the official Eurovision Song Contest podcast, back with another episode featuring today Ireland's finest witch. It is Bambi Thug. Hello. Hello. Uh, I've got a brilliant quote that I've pulled out from you. I love that you said this. You said, I don't like fighting people, but I will hit them with my lyrical fist. Oh, yeah, 100%. I'm actually super <laughs> calm, but my lyrics are can be feisty. And if you upset me, I'm sorry, I'm coming for you. Um, I've got so much to talk to you about. Uh, I want to find out all about you and all about Doomsday Blue. Uh, stay right there, Bambi. It is Ireland's Bambi Thug on this week's episode of the podcast. <laughs> Bambi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, I'm back <laughs> home in Ireland. I'm up um, in Dublin, actually, at the moment. Um, we were just filming a um, something special for the Eurovision, actually. Um, I don't know if I can say what it is yet, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> as we're recording this, you're getting ready for all the pre-parties as well, aren't you? I am excited. Do you know what? I'm really excited to meet the other contestants who I've been talking to and... Um, I'm really excited to go to Madrid, especially because um, I keep getting tagged on Twitter of these people who've made this like half water bottle, half baby doll that's like hanging and swinging around on a rope. And I was like, they're like, this is in Madrid. And I was like, right, I'm going to have to do the Madrid party. Is this going to be coming? It's like so cursed. Who's Who are you looking forward to seeing? I'm really excited to meet Nemo because obviously like another non-binary person in the competition is really... Um, just makes it feel a bit more, uh, I don't know, I haven't even met them in person, but I already feel a bit more seen, a bit more like understood by having someone else there. So I'm really excited to meet them. Um, I'm really excited to meet Ollie. So that's fun. And then you've got a bit of London as well, a bit of Amsterdam. This is yeah. all nice warm up for, for Sweden. It's warm up probably for my vocals more than the performance because I'm not going to be giving anything away. Keeping your cards Oh, the tarot cards close so, to your chest. Yes, keeping them so close, keeping them secret, keeping them safe. I know that you said that you you thought you were the wild card for Ireland in Eurosong, but actually, I would say that looking back now, surely you were the favourite. <laughs> but still, for Ireland, that's a wild card, you know. Like, as in, that's not. We're in, I'm not the type of music that they send generally. I'm not the type of music they even know about, really, to be honest. I'm just really proud of my country for doing doing the right thing. <laughs> I, I've got I've got a friend from Ireland. I've got to show you a little photo, and they sent me this uh, this screenshot of when they voted for you. O two 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 o two. Do you know what? I have so many people sending me those screenshots. People were just like, "We must do it." We must send the witch. Um, well, they did. You are being sent. I you know. Being sent. You've been no, Bamba. You've been summoned. That's what I know. Have. What made you want to do Eurovision? The fact that Ireland and Sweden are on a tie this year. Um, seven and seven. I'm half Swedish, and I think I've realised that I might be the only actual Swedish person in the competition because the Norwegian, they're Norwegian representing Sweden. So yes, like, yeah, the twins are Norwegian. Yeah. Wait, so you, you are half Swedish? Yeah, my dad is from Bruma, from Stockholm. Do you know what? It's it's something that I've always thought about doing, um, but I guess this year kind of just like the cards fell in the right place and it made sense for me this year. Before Christmas to my sister, I was like, God, I have no Irish fans. No one knows me in my own country. And like nobody, like I have a few up in Dublin from doing some like... Um, supporting a support act for our other artists um but i was like right let's let's do this let's get some some people on board and now hello it's beautiful and yeah and then since then then i just won and i was like i'm going i'm just i'm really super grateful you know because like i am an independent artist and i have been grinding <laughs> for years <laughs> So to be given this big a platform to showcase my art is just amazing, and I'm 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 really working hard, and I'm I'm very excited to um, completely give a brand new version, brand new scene of of Doomsday on on the big stage, and uh, scare some people, but hopefully win the hearts of a lot more people. Yeah, totally. And um, is is your dad proud? He is. He actually was a. Uh, 
we have to do some like uh, Swedish sentences for the origin. So I was like, just like double checking my my pronunciation with him. So even though he didn't teach me Swedish growing up, I think he's enjoying helping me pronounce things better now. Even though I was like, yeah. this could have been easier. This could have been easier. If 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 the Euro song was a flavor, especially your terrifying backing dances. Well, terrifying and cute. Terrifyingly cute. So That's funny that everyone that. thinks they're scary. I'm literally like, they are so like, I don't <laughs> <laughs> To me. Well, that's why I, that's why I changed it to terrifyingly cute. Terrifyingly or cutely cute. Yeah, you got a little bit of like Donnie Darko s kind of cutesy. Yeah, spirit. yeah, I I like them. Who are they? Are they coming with you? Danny and Matt, they were my dancers for uh, Euro Song. Matt is also my choreographer. He was the first person I met on my. Uh, audition for university in London for musical theatre <gasps> college. Ah, oh, you and go way back. We go so far back, and we were also we keep laughing about the fact that we were both in bottom level tap, so we were the worst at tap <laughs> all the way through uni. Like we, I was more ballet, he was more street, more contemporary, but we were both always holding on to the bar still in third year, <laughs> and for us to be Love like it. the worst. At that that form of dancing for us to be uh. together on this stage is incredible because I remember um like I said it to him when he finished uni, I was like, Babe, I swear to God, I am going to bring you to, we're gonna be on a big stage together. He's like, Yeah, ma <laughs> And now we are. So it's like it's it's super beautiful to be sharing that um with someone who's known me through all my all my forms, all my names before I even discovered myself as a non-binary person, like someone who knows me in every aspect and still loves me for me. He is an incredible choreographer as well, and yeah, I'm, I'm delighted. So Matt will be coming with us, definitely. Are um, you still both terrible at tap? <laughs> <laughs> it's too. My ankles are too. The ballet. I actually sometimes I still practice like the first year tap lessons and when I'm waiting for the tube in London and I'm like, God, I'm never getting these. <laughs> like, this is not for me. Have you got some tap shoes? I'd love you to bring them to Sweden. I do Sweden. have tap shoes. I do. I do have tap shoes. God knows why I kept them because I literally <laughs> look at them and I'm like, you know, there's like, I'm a perfectionist, so I need to be good at like everything I do, but I've just accepted defeat. Ta- tap is your nemesis forever and ever. Nemesis. Forever. <laughs> tap and sport. Bring the tap shoes. They could be like in the center of some kind of, I don't know, some kind Put of. Put them on, throw them into the pyro. <laughs> yeah, 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 completely. That will be your moment. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> your, it will be your tap redemption <laughs> on the stage at Eurovision. <laughs> I am done with tap now. <laughs> it's <finished>. like, why? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. Talking of which, I love the video for Doom Thank So you. Blue. It is really good fun. I love all the different influences that you've talked about from from Hocus Pocus to like Kate mean Bush girls. Like, to Mean Girls as well. This is all from your mind, right? I mean, my mind is a bit crazy, but we kind of just wanted to involve as much pop culture references as we could. And like for the for the chorus, like I wanted to have different outfits as if, you know, the Barbie changes and it's like... Um, and for me, like having the craft, having uh, Charmed, Hocus Pocus, um, like the Blaze Bible is basically the burn book. We've hidden a little doll of me in all the scenes, kind of like a okay. doll kind of thing. Um, okay. that, there's one scene where the fingers are touching and that's the Michelangelo God and Adam. Because um, also Michelangelo shares a birthday with me. Um, and there's just loads of... We just wanted to make it so rich in its references and also because I just, I love acting. Like, I love playing different characters. I love wigs. Like, I love dressing up. <laughs> and I think the more you watch the video, the more you can take in. And I think, actually, that's happening with the song as well. Like, I have so many people being like, I hated this song when it came out. And now I love this song. And I'm like, yeah, give it a chance. Yeah, I hope like the the music video just brought it to life a bit more, and I am quite a visual artist, so that's important for me. Are you a massive Regina George fan? I'm more of Janice Ian. I like the weirdos. Yeah, a mix, maybe like a weird Regina George 
Yeah. A weird Regina George. Yeah, yeah me. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, exactly. Bambi George, let's call it that. You've probably been told this so many times, but you you are now joining this illustrious list of Irish artists who are doing Eurovision. From from the belters like Linda Martin and Neve Kavanagh to Jedward and Dustin the Turkey. Uh, how do you feel about joining this fabulous lineup of people? I feel very, very grateful and very blessed. Just that like the there's been lots of people putting like <laughs> like pictures of everybody else next to pictures of me and being like, what happened? <laughs> I feel great, you know, like, I think it's it's an incredible opportunity and I'm just excited that we've added a little goth creature to the mix. <laughs> I have met, who I've met is, I met Jedward, they came to my um, my London headline show actually before I even did your own song um, and they are our sweethearts. They get behind something and they will be your cheerleaders. Yeah, I mean, like, I think that that's actually quite an Irish thing. Like, obviously not the people who think that I'm evil <laughs> <laughs> in Ireland, but, like, uh, like Ireland, like, especially as well Cork people, like, it's been an amazing year for Cork and people from Cork are, like, super loud and super proud about supporting so, yeah, I think that there's probably not a better country that I could be representing because there's just so much love in it. Mostly I'm, I'm really proud to be um, representing Cork because Cork is having such a good year this year. Hopefully it continues. Killian Murphy just won the Oscar. Oh, he did, yes. He's just down the road from me in the city. <sighs> lives, his family lived down the road. Um, no way. Yeah, and they've painted all the um, the post boxes gold in honor of his Oscar in the city. Love it. So <laughs> when you win, when you win Eurovision, all the post boxes are going to turn blue, right? Yeah, except for Killian Murphy's one, probably have to stay. Okay, yeah, that, that can stay gold. Yeah, but yeah. All, all the rest blue, without yeah. a doubt. Bambi, who is your dream collaboration? My dream. Um, yeah. Wow, I have so many. Um, Dolly Parton. <laughs> um, I'd love Dolly Parton. Um, there's an artist called Big K L I T, um, okay. who is an incredible rapper who I've always wanted to collaborate with. I think it says something that you said Dolly Parton straight away, though. Do you know oh what I mean? Out of that list, sorry, uh, he's a queen. Like, have you, yeah, have you ever been to Dollywood, or would you like to go to Dollywood? I would love to go. I love theme parks, and I love Dolly Parton. My favourite one is Hillbilly Heaven. But I have you know, to she's like, it. I dream I was there <laughs> in Hillbilly Heaven. <laughs> I love it. She's a good soul, isn't she? Yeah, we need a um, country. Full on country banger. Well, there's been, yeah, there's been like country tinges, but, you know, let's not stray too much off topic because, well, you know, we've got to stick with goth for the minute. You know? Sorry, sorry, there sorry. It's not goth there, country yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There, there hasn't been too many. I would, you know, not that I would ever want to compare you with anybody else, but you're definitely doing something very individual this year. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think this is a standout song because there's kind of like, it's in its own kind of like pocket. Definitely this year. Definitely probably in its own anyway. I'm excited to change people's minds, actually, mostly. Um, I'm excited for um, just people to be, to watch it live and be like, ah, oh, damn it, now this is my number one. <laughs> <laughs> also, to prove all the people in Ireland that didn't like you uh, wrong as well. Yeah. But you know what? You're, you look, it's, I'm a polarising act, you know. Um, I think that that's... I think that's good, to be honest. Like, I think it's it's good to not be everybody's cup of tea. It's good to make people question, like, what is this? Like, is this, you know, I have a lot of people being like, is this music or is it a, a short, like, play or is this? I'm like, it's everything. Do you know what the people hated when it came out on the radio? Or when it wasn't even allowed on the radio? Bohemian Rhapsody. It was like a seven-minute opera. Like, it wasn't what music was. Like... People absolutely despised it, and then it was giant. So people really being um, upset by me, I take as a good sign. When did you first realise you could go full screamo, and how do you look after that voice? Um, so I have a scream coach, keeps me in check 
I kind of discovered screaming um, actually after I started working, I, I started songwriting with another artist called Cassia, who's a very good friend of mine, and she is like a scream queen. So it was kind of through her that I was like, ah, I'm going to be able to scream. <laughs> like I use it in some of my some of my songs, not everything, but it's, you know what it is? It's like, it's such a release and... I have these people online who are like rating the song and being like, oh, it's so bad to scream. It's so, so terrible for your voice. It's not because they're like, there's a placement. There's a way there's exercises you do so that you're not hurting yourself. Like all it is, is like another creature inside me that I get to explore, you know, and it's so much fun. I think it's my favorite part of the whole song is the end when I get to be like, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you everyone knows that every eurovision song needs a big finish and that's what it is yeah you know we'll all like be like holding on for dear life yeah i want like, everyone to do it with it. me <laughs> you're gonna like tear down the arena through the reverberations of it i'd love that i'll be like blast to the storm the last <laughs> has anyone given you any advice or, like about what to do when you're there or how to navigate it the only advice I've kind of gotten is um, to make sure that I take time to be no nobody. Like me alone, rest my voice in between and to enjoy it really. Like I, apart from that, um, like I'm trying to not make myself, I'm trying to not allow myself to get too nervous about it because I'm trying to see it as just like, not just another show, but as another just like as a show instead of being like okay there are this million people watching me right now therefore blah 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 like I'm just gonna I'm gonna give it my all I just love performing you know like in in any 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 capacity and I'm actually most excited to have like a the stage and 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 the the production and um the lights Mm, and uh, special effects and some pyro. I assume a bit of pyro. <laughs> well, yeah, no, we, we, you've committed to pyro now because the tap shoes are being thrown into it. Yeah, so, yeah yes. Know, my tap shoe is flying across, trying to get into the pyro, accidentally hitting one of the audience, causing a lawsuit. <laughs> Somebody's got a head injury because the tap shoes hit them in the head. No, no tap shoes. But what, what are you packing? What are your three things that you're going to pack for Eurovision? Your essentials, your Bambi essentials. Oh, white face paint, eyelashes. And wigs. And can you give me a tarot reading, please, when we're in Malmö? Yeah, of course I can. I'll pull your cards. Uh, you should probably become the tarot reader for all the other entries as well. They, <laughs> they'd love it. I reckon they'd love it. it would they would so love good. it. You know what it is, though? It's like, I personally, I pull really good sets for everybody, but there are 75 cards, so I'm still learning all the cards. Maybe I could just pull one card per person. Yeah, that's probably better. There's enough countries to do so. So yeah. let's, let's stick with that. Um, Bambi, it's going to be such a ride and a journey. I'm very excited for you. Thank you so much. I promise to deliver something that you will enjoy and remember forever.